Proverbs chapter 20, uh, chapter 30, chapter 30, verse 18. There be three things which are too wonderful for me. And this is by Agar, uh, chapter 30, verse 1. Yea, four which I know not. This guy is honest. This guy tells us exactly what he knows, what he doesn't know, and he makes us think. You know, the Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. <coughs> when we read Proverbs 30 throughout a year, we, okay, we're done. Or do you read and say, you know what? Yeah, I wonder. Do you even try, maybe try to Google it? Try to look it up? Some information in the Bible? Or we just read through? That's why we take chapter by chapter. In Proverbs, we've been breaking it in half because there's so much in one verse with all the verses that match it. And we'll probably be doing the same thing with the book of Equally Asked. He's going to divide it. Uh, probably get back into chapter by chapter, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, and on. But Proverbs and, Song, and, and Equally Asked is just so much in one verse. So he said there's three things in four. Hmm, there's a lot of information. And hopefully I bring it out to make you think. The way of an eagle in the air. Any bird. And I know you can go online, you can, you know, how does a bird fly? And they, they'll show you the aerodynamics and they'll show you, you know, little charts and the wind. They didn't know that back then. And how do you know they know what they know today? How do you know this is not bunk? I mean, They'll get you today, you know, a man will get behind a pulpit, and a man will get behind a pole, and, oh, in the Greek, oh, he must know something. Oh, this is how an eagle, all right, explain to me gravity. Explain to me how the molten earth inside the earth is liquid hot. Lava, magma. Oh, well, you know, the just, no, it's hell. And I'm going to find it quite hard to believe anybody who doesn't believe the Bible. Maybe when we get up to heaven one day, God will have an eternal life. Jesus Christ will say, all right, all the brides and everybody come, come, into, come into the room, come into this mansion. This is what man thought. Here's reality from the creator. You know? What is man's explanation why the ocean stops at the beach and it comes up so far, but none is going for The Bible tells us. I mean, we sang a hymn the other day, yesterday, that is a from sea to signing sea. The dumb idiot doesn't realize it's ocean to ocean. Duh. And look at the ego, look at the ego not in the realm of evolution, but that God designed that ego. And if you were to look at the ego in his life and really look at, I'm not talking about what man says, but the observations of the ego, how they teach your young to fly. They drop the young, and at the last moment, mama or daddy will pick up that ego and bring it back to the nest, and then they'll flutter the, the, the nest with their wings. The, the, the eaglet will fall again. And they'll keep doing that until the eagle the eaglet gets its wings strong and powerful and right, and then they'll take off. That's part of the lessons of the eagle. How high can the eagle get all the way up there without, you know, having a lack of oxygen? The way of a serpent upon a rock. Now, a serpent does not have any hands. He does not have any feet. But if you watch him go up a rock. And I've watched videos you know, of rock climbers and, you know, the, the, the artificial uh the indoor rocks that they climb. And they, they, though they're skilled, they have a hard time doing it. And that's a, listen, that's a hard job. I wouldn't be able to do it. 
and they grip and they grab and they got a rope and and a snake doesn't have a rope and he doesn't have hands he doesn't have feet and yet he can get on top of a smooth rock how again you can google it and you'll find out you know there's scales and stuff like that and or maybe god has another way the way of a ship in the midst of the sea any aerodynamic, listen, this is a guy, he's looking out there, he's like, wow, what is, he doesn't, he doesn't know all the functions. And he's being honest. If you're a seaman, if you're a captain, if you're in the Marines, and uh, hey, you got that knowledge. I guarantee there's something that you would look at like, I don't know how that works. I understand the captains of vessels of ships are probably things he don't understand. Guys being honest, I, I appreciate that. The way of a man with a maid. A virgin. What, what a man will do for the love of a woman is what he's saying. How a man will go gaga and goo goo and just, you know, his whole entire life will be for that woman. When he's got the woman of the woman. And then again, I don't know if this man knew the life of Solomon, but look at all the, the sin and dangers that Solomon got in with all his women. Look at, I don't know if he knew the, David, but look at all the trouble he got in with women. And there are women out there, we've read through the book of Proverbs, they are strange women, and they cause trouble and misery to men. Yes. <coughs> and then there are, we're going to be looking at the virtuous woman. There are the virtuous women, they are crowned to their husband. And he, he looks at this aspect with a man, with a woman, with a good wife, and maybe, maybe a rotten wife. We looked at the contentions wife and all that, and he looks at, at the aspect and say, you know, how that guy just loves his wife, how that guy and she loves him, and it's how wonderful they are. And then uh, how rotten that, that woman is to that man. And he, he loves her, he puts up with her. What are you saying? All the aspects. It says a man and a maid. Any. Then say the man, the maid. Such is a way of an adulterous woman. Such in a way, a way of what? Verse 19, the way of an eagle, the way of the serpent, the way of the ship, and the way of a man. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth. Eagle flyeth. Serpent does a serpent thing. The ship sails. The man with a, with a woman. The adulterous woman, she eats. She wipes her mouth. She gets, you know, all the crumbs off and the, and the ketchup and the barbecue sauce. And say it, I have done no wickedness. That guy's looking at adultery woman like, you just committed adultery. You are a known adulteress. And he's like, wow, how can you be like that? And that's American women of Hollywood. They sleep around, uh, that tailor there multiple husbands, multiple divorces, and, and then you got women today who don't even marry. They sleep with whoever they want to sleep with and all that, and it's just, the Bible believer looks at that as, you're a whore. You're adultery. You're fornicate. And the world looks like, a, ooh, I want to be like, how can that woman, how can she live with herself? Sin. For three things, the earth is disquieted, and for four, which it cannot bear. The servant, when he reigneth, that's Jeroboam. Jeroboam split the nation into two with Rehoboam. Jeroboam was a servant, a worker of, of King Solomon. And what he's saying is, Here's a man that, that did the servitude of, of somebody. And I know people don't like servitude and all that, but hey, it's in the Bible. 
This guy weighs on somebody else. It'd be like you go into a restaurant and a waiter and a wait or the waitress comes to you and can I take your order? And they bring your your, your soda and your meal, you know, and your napkins and refills you. And then you go back next week or next month, and that waiter, that waitress is now the owner of the restaurant. How did that happen? And yet, you know what? That's going to happen. The servant reign. Those that serve the Lord Jesus Christ that are the children of God. Those that serve and, and, and do the service of the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, we're going to be kings. And there are going to be people that are going to scratch your head. Christians who don't do nothing for Jesus. How's he over me? How come I don't have no crowns and he's got a crown? I mean, I was... The pastor, I was somebody in the church, I was the deacon, I was a Sunday school teacher, I didn't get anything. The f and a fool which when he a fool when he filled with me, here's your American welfare system. If Agar fighter crawling across my I'll come across the fighter in a moment. Agar, I want to make sure it was him. Agar, Agar. If he would be transported to America today, he'd be like, on the first of the month, in a grocery store. How are all these people got their carriages filled with the best food? They don't work. They don't do nothing. There's a wife there with a couple of children, and, and, and she's got a calculator. She's got a list, and she's got these little pieces of paper with, 25 cents and a dollar off and, and and their carriage is not full and her husband works and those he'd be amazed you think God's going to bless America when America gives and takes care of the lazy sluggard fools when the Bible says you're not supposed to And odious, that's offensive, woman, when she's married. <laughs> Haven't we been reading about her, the contentious woman? Notice it says woman, it does not say wife. She hasn't been married yet, but she does get married. She's offensive, she's rude, she's crude. She got married? What? Who does she find? She, she's got to be loaded with money. She's got to have property or something. And a handmaid that is heir to her, to her mistress, and that's like the servant that reigned it. Here's a, here's a little girl, young lady. She's, she takes care of a woman that's wealthy and well. You know, gets her perfumes out, gets her dresses out. And... The mistress dies, and at the reading of the will, this servant girl gets the fortune. And you, you've seen it on TV and all that. And the guy's like, "What is that?" I mean, she should get something. She was she was a loyal servant. There be four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceedingly wise. So he always things are not always so big as important. The ants, that's the only time ants shows up in the Bible, are a people not strong. Not strong. The ant can lift 5,000 times of its own body weight. Yet they prepare their meat in the summer. I don't think he's talking about physical strength. I think he's talking about if you ever seen an ant, have you ever seen ants, you ever had an ant farm, how they all work together. Yeah, they can carry food particles and sticks that are much bigger than that. That's, that's the broad picture. They all work together for the, the well being of, I was going to say, hot, what, the, the hill. You don't have the Republican ants, you don't have the Democratic ants. 
You don't have the poor ants and the rich ants. You got a colony of ants. And they prepare their meat in the summer, and I'll run back to 22. The fool when he filled with meat. The ants work. The fool doesn't. People who orchestrate the welfare system, God's going to say, uh, the ants worked to feed their ants. How come you gave them money who didn't work? The Coney is a kind of rabbit. And in America, Coney Island, it's an island that was filled with rabbits and hares, are a feeble folk. All right, they're not really strong. They don't really have the defensive me measures. They don't have sharp teeth and claws. Remember, we're looking at things that are little, but they're wise. Yet make their houses in the rocks. That's the most safest place to be. And you look at the ants. I mean, come on. Have you really gone to an ant hill one day and closed it up? I have. Have you ever taken a stick and put it in, in a hole of an ant? I mean, they got to rebuild. They got to redesign the the the, the colonies. Well, you ain't gonna cover their house up. The locusts have no king. You mean they don't vote? Yet go they forth, all of them. By bands, they go forth in a in a military order, and no one's ordering them. And they go in a rank and file, and no one's saying right face, left face, forward. <laughs> they're little tiny insects, but man, they're wise. Read the story of the locusts in the Bible. The only friend that the locusts did not have was John the Baptist. And maybe Elijah. <laughs> the spider. Take his hold of her hands. I wonder what the books say about... I'm trying to think. Six or eight legs now. The Holy Spirit. Inspiration of Agar in the Bible says that a spider has hands. I wonder what the I wonder what the scientists say. And is in king palaces. The riches of Solomon, because Solomon wrote the earlier proverb. Let's take Solomon. The riches. The guy had an ivory throne and he covered it with gold. Lions going up the <clears throat> the stairs. As of Horus. Esther said, hey, listen, if he don't put out his, his scepter, anybody, if you come walking in the king's presence, if he don't hold that scepter, you're dead. And up there in the corner of the thing, there's a spider up there with a web. He didn't get no permission. And you don't kill him, you take away his web. He'll be back. It's a little tiny thing. There are three things which go well. Yea, four are calmly in going. So go and going. Jesus tells us to go in all the world and preach the gospel. A lion, which is strongest among the beasts, Turneth not away for any. <coughs> He's not going to go out of the way. He's the king of the beast. A greyhound, only place in the Bible. And a he go. Also a king and a king against whom there is no rising.
Verse 30 and 31 points to the he goat, the Antichrist. Daniel chapter 8, 21. You're not going to defeat the Antichrist, and there's only one thing going to, two things going to happen to the Antichrist. In one moment, he, he's going to get some kind of wound in his right arm, in his right eye, and he will die. And then he's going to resurrect himself and come alive. And then God, Jesus Christ, is going to come and put him in the false prophet in the lake of fire that burns forever. Now, I, I had a video when I was one of the first church I was, me and my wife were. We had a video. And these, these Gentile Christians, there's no Christians in the. That's bad enough saying Daniel and them were Christians. I lost my track. Oh, okay. yeah. So this movie, they conquered the beast by having an artificial mark. That ain't going to happen. Okay? The Bible says, unless the man received the mark, the name, or the number, you have three choices, on your forehead or your, your head, you will not buy and you will not sell. If thou hast done foolishly in lifting up thyself, pride, how great I am. You think well of yourself. You have that moment in your daydreaming or your dream. You're the great one. Listen, I'm full of that. I get those dreams. I'll have those dreams where I am I am in a room with a bunch of people and they all got saved. That's foolishly lifting myself up and that needs to repent, be repented of. Or if thou hast thought evil, Pride is evil. Lay thy hand upon thy mouth. Shh, quiet. Shut up. Don't say anything. Just shut your mouth. Stop talking. For the churning, that's the only time that word of milk. You ever seen churning? Up and down, up and down, up and down. Bring it forth butter. It's like a beating. I don't know how else to describe it, like a beating, friction, force, and the wrinkling, wrinkling of the nose bringing forth blood. It, you, you take someone's nose and you twist it. You turn it. It's going to bring blood. So as pressure and, and up and down motion of, of the cream to make butter, the force and the force of twisting somebody's nose bringing blood so the forcing of wrath now you would think 32 and 33 are the same but 32 is you got pride you, you, you think evil thoughts just shut up no, you don't need to even tell anybody you need to repent Verse 33. All right. The ringling of the nose. Go up to someone's nose and just start twisting it back and forth. It's going to bleed. Go turn some butter. It's going to make cream is going to make butter. As making the butter is making someone's nose bleed. So forcing a wrath. Coming, making, producing wrath. Bringing forth strife and just arguments and troubles and problems. Now, I can see the ringing of you know, the blood. Ow, that hurts. <laughs> Shirley, I guess that's why maybe Shirley starts off, I don't know what the turning of the milk does. Just force and pressure. But he has laid out to us things to just look at without computer, without the knowledge of man and his in knowledge abilities. Because the man that will tell you the things that we learned about will say we came from apes. 
That's a lie. It's the same man that will say Jonah did not die and go into hell. You see, there was a cavity inside the whale's nostrils. And that's where Jonah lay there. How about we get away from what man says? Because man may not know. And how about we just look at it? My son, growing up, that, that kid would, would spend hours just watching the ants. I don't know what he got. I know he learned because the Bible says, go to, go to the ant, thou sluggard. Job says, go ask the beast. And you can learn things. I mean, I got a fish tank in front of me, and I just sit here and relax. I just watch the fish. I got a bird feeder outside the door when, when I, you know, when I got bird seeding, I just watch the birds. They were created by God, not by evolution. Now, I think we're going to get to heaven one day, and I think we're going to learn a lot more things than what man has taught us. I think God's going to re rehash all the scholars and the scholarship that they learned. I mean, let's read the Bible, study the Bible, and say, yeah, I wonder how that is. Let's take God for what he is. Holy Spirit wrote this. Textbooks were not written by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> 